Hey there guys, Spazzy here aka Syndromes and welcome back to what is essentially a continuation of a very unsuccessful livestream because uh, at 10pm on a Sunday evening my dad decided to barge in, uh, well, drop, you know, <laughs> drop by and uh, basically go, get in loser, we're going to assemble a 75 inch TV and I need someone to put it on the wall. Someone who won't break a hip if he falls down, and yeah, well, guess who that is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what's fun, I'll give you some <laughs> photos uh, once I actually go back to his place and take a picture of the end result. I, I got some photos of us doing the thing, for just for some reason I didn't think to even get the end result, but it, it was fine. Anyway, so, as I started to talk at the very start of that Let's Play, and that um, at the time recording that thing, Episode, uh, I think it was nine. Well, hey, well, let me check. I think it was nine. Just a momentum. Yes, uh, episode nine was already assembled. It wasn't yet posted then. Uh, it was assembled, but I did upload a small kind of haha -ha funny clip of us uh, essentially repeating uh, history, going a little bit too far into the um, uh, titanium sectors and essentially getting our uh, anus pushed in and losing four ships in the progress. Uh, so, the SNS Paladin, which is, I know it's a terrible name and I will think of a new one, uh, the whole idea of that ship was to see, can I create a ship that can be piloted by an NPC that is essentially just a punching bag? So, hit points first, everything else in such a close second, like, uh, it's in such a far second that it's literally in a different postcode. Anyway, uh, the whole thing started off uh, relatively simple. I kind of really shot myself in the foot by making a, another design with this kind of central, you know, mass sort of thing, but in the end I do believe that probably was a good idea simply because uh, it allowed me to place thrusters only on the back and the front of the ship, so uh, maybe it wasn't really that bad, but you can totally see that it kind of remains there, and very exposed for the whole duration of the assembly, and uh, it's probably not a very good thing design-wise. Now, I will tell you right now, I still think that the Razzle Dazzle is uh, the probably the best ship I've still created design-wise, and the Paladin is nowhere near the complexity, because, again, the whole point was to create it out of um, material that would make sure... Uh, well, first of all, I need to make sure that it was designed out of parts that would not just instantaneously fall off. And you'll notice that the weapon mounts that I placed it, even though they're oversized for the turrets that we currently have, uh, that is kind of the whole point. The blocks themselves are so large that as long as they're covered by integrity field, uh, they will be almost impossible to accidentally shoot off if this thing gets below 50% health. Again, uh, I did not even make uh, any adjustments uh, to how I want to control this thing because I am never going to be, you know, manually piloting this thing. And uh, the ship itself can have a 0 .01 uh, radius per second turn rate, but an NPC can take advantage of that in a way that a player, uh, you know, flying the ship manually simply can't. And so basically, the whole idea of the Paladin was to create a maxed out a five slot ship that is capable of jumping and also capable of dishing out damage. So in the end, this thing is going to have much, much more, like in the 300,000s in opposed to what uh, Razzle Dazzle currently has, which is uh, about like 10 times as uh, less. And yet, at the same time, I'm not going to make it too overpowered in terms of Omicron, simply because due to the size of the ship and due to the way that this thing works, it will have to use bolters, and right now we don't really have a lot of bolters. Anyway, uh, the design really is what it is. I kind of went with that kind of, uh, you know, the, the uh, whole... Uh, crew cabin sort of thing at the top. Uh, apart from that, it really is a highly simplistic ship. I really did not spend a whole lot of time on this thing. A total of about 30 minutes if um, the uh, the video that I'm currently uh, using for the footage tells me. And the whole idea 
was to create a ship, again, just for the hit point pull, that has just barely enough energy to jump and support all five system slots that I are going to have on this thing. And already I'm uh, thinking about uh, all the things that I need is probably one or two or maybe three weapon slots, uh, weapon uh, expansions, uh, turret control systems basically, uh, a hull pol uh, polarizer that would be, you know, that would actually give me more, um, more hit point pool in a position to getting some sort of um, uh, damage increase uh, versus certain types of weapons, maybe energy weapons probably because it's still iron sectors and we're not going to encounter them too far. And uh, lastly, it's probably going to be something else, but I still don't really know. Maybe a tractor beam, I don't know. Uh, overall, I am happy with how the ship um, ended up being. Uh, perhaps not design-wise, but it is effective, at least until we start getting into fights with uh, factions that have things like cannons or launchers. Even if they're not, not guided, launchers are decimating against hull, and this thing is just going to be hull. Um, in its current design, there's not enough small parts where it would really matter if it had... Uh, you know, shields or something. I really don't think that it'll have to be. But right now, the biggest uh, the biggest problem with the ship that I currently see is simply the fact that at some point we are going to start meeting ships that are going to outrange the damn thing, and it is physically not going to be able to keep up with them. And so, all I have to do is just make sure that it's capable of doing quote something, and just worry about the consequences just a little bit later. Um, in the end, the Paladin in the sandbox version that I currently have it, I tested it against a regular, um, just regular tier 6 to tier 10 enemies. It worked perfectly fine. Like, I have absolutely no qualms about this thing. Um, the NPCs, the enemy NPCs, will try to get close to this thing and they will just smash themselves against it. And that's the point. This thing is like a huge punching bag, and I'm kind of wondering if we can kind of make use of how um, priority is sorted when it comes to enemy NPCs, if it's just the closest target, or maybe it's the most uh, good potent target that gets attacked first. But uh, overall, I think, that, I think that the Paladin is going to do exactly what it needs to do, aka be just a big slab of meat for punching, so basically a tank. Again, Paladin, I, I haven't played World of Warcraft for quite a while, so, um, yeah. And apart from that, uh, it actually turned out to be not really all that um, expensive. For a ship that is only made out of iron, it costs about 100,000 iron, 30,000 titanium, which is used only for the shield, uh, sorry, uh, for the integrity field generators, the energy generators and energy containers, and uh, basically about 250,000 credits-ish. I don't remember at the time recording this uh, voiceover, but uh, overall, that is the point. Uh, you will probably see this thing somewhere around, perhaps not in the next few episodes, no, because we will need to rebuild the four ships that we lost first and foremost. But, um, yeah, this is going to solve one of the issues that I that we um, encountered in the last session where uh, we... I think what happened is uh, Mutt and Arrow actually jumped into a system that belonged to a hostile faction and not just randomly generated pirates in a, you know, a hand mass sector. So obviously those ships are much more potent than uh, their uh, randomized NPC counterparts. And... Uh, they got destroyed. Even Mutt. Mutt actually had much more, uh, a, m a much bigger Omicron rating than Razzle Dazzle, and he still somehow managed to um, uh, lose the uh, Torpedo Dog. But yeah, that is basically it. Stay tuned for this ship, is, as it's going to appear in the next few episodes, hopefully. And apart from that, yeah, another ship to add to the... Um, list, ever-growing ever list of our expanding uh, shipyards. Uh, there is also something that I kind of wanted to test with the concept of a trade pod 
which means that it would be just a ship that is literally just a cargo pod that has uh, a little bit of energy generation on it so you can mount a few systems on it. No thrusters, no engines, no nothing. It, it, it's not even meant to fly. And uh, kind of use it just from the map view for it to acquire and sell or just generally trade, um, you know, just do trading runs and see what happens there. And yeah, I think that's going to be um, maybe a next sort of project of mine. I don't really know just yet. All I know is that I am ready to, you know, continue the series as it is. And uh, yeah, that's that's the SNS Paladin. Uh, name uh, name still not decided completely. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon again, guys. And hopefully my next uh, livestream is going to be just a little bit better.